Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting Midnight Balloon Ride and I'm sipping on some green tea today. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, cobalt blue, Mars black, fluorescent orange, fluorescent purple, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, and deep yellow. And of course, you can switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'll use for some drawing, and then I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush, I have a number eight round synthetic brush, and I have a number zero round synthetic brush, and I'll refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course, you can switch those up as well if you'd like. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same type of paint and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there for you. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so what we're going to do for the first step is we're going to be painting our background. I'm going to use my large brush. The colors I'm using are blue, black, and white. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-mix myself a nice dark kind of midnight sky blue, and then I'm going to paint the majority of the canvas with that color. I'm going to make a little bit of a lighter area in the center of my canvas. So what I've done is I've pre-mixed myself my sky blue that I will, sky and water blue that I'll be using. Um, so you can see where I'm headed. How I got there was I used my cobalt blue. I added just a little bit of black to it and just a little bit of white to it. What I'm in essence doing, let me turn this so it, you can see it a little bit better. What I'm in essence doing is adding gray to my cobalt blue. So this will kind of dull it down, make it look a little bit more natural. And just, I'm adding my black just a tiny, tiny bit at a time because I know how quickly the black can take over. So I don't, I won't be able to reverse the black out of it if it goes too dark. So I'm just adding it a little tiny bit at a time, spinning it around, seeing if it's as dark as I want. I know it will get a little bit darker as it dries, but I definitely, um, I want to get it pretty close to, to my visual preference before I start painting. And this is looking pretty good to me. The white helps to add a little bit better opacity to the paint. So this is, this is looking pretty good. And then once you've got the desired color that you're going for, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be painting the entire, just making sure I've got mine mixed as well as I want. So it's all a nice solid color. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to start at the top of my canvas and I'm just going to be applying my paint with a left to right brush stroke. I, you can use a lot of paint. You can use a little bit of paint, whatever works for you. You just want to get a nice good coverage. You might find that you want to also, after you're done um, applying this coat to the background, that you might want to do a second coat if your paint is a little bit on the streaky side or doesn't give you the full coverage that you had anticipated. You can also richen or deepen the color a little bit by doing a second coat on it as well. So that'll be a personal preference on your part. And again, it will get a little bit darker. My paint will anyways, as it dries, you might have a different type of paint that doesn't shift colors as much as mine. But once I get about halfway down there, what I'm going to do is I am going to pick up 
white paint on my dirty brush and I'm going to paint it right on top of this um, blue that I just created. I'm going to uh, move my gradient up into that previous section and then I'm going to just kind of keep moving it down. So what I'm in essence doing is just kind of creating a light or a lighter area in the center of my canvas for where we're going to have the landscape um, showing and so it'll be a little bit lighter at the horizon line. So now that I've got that on there I'm just going to go back into picking up my pre-mixed blue color that we made and I'll get that to blend into that lighter section and then I'm going to just paint the rest of the canvas down towards the bottom with this um, custom blue that we created. So as I'm blending it back up into this lighter section, I'm just kind of going a little bit slower, making sure that I've got a nice blend, but I don't darken all of that light area. And then just kind of going back and forth, left to right to get it to blend out and smooth the way that I want it to. And now I'm just going to keep picking up that custom blue and coming all the way down to the bottom of my canvas. We will be utilizing um, our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this all nice and painted in, you can put this large brush away and then you can just take out your medium brush and just finishing up here and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the land and its reflections. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. I'm gonna be using black and white paint. Um, I do recommend before you start this step that you make sure that your canvas is dry. It'll be a little bit easier of a process. So this is that time where you get to take the extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry, or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. So I'm gonna be doing just some nice, simple, rolling hill rock type of formation to give the painting some good perspective and dimension throughout the throughout the visual aspect of it. So I'm going to start with some black paint on my medium brush and I'm going to give myself a couple of markers. I want my horizon or my land to be almost in the middle of my canvas. So on the left hand side I'm going to find about the halfway point. I'm going to make myself a marker and then I'm going to come down from that about an inch and give myself a marker there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure how high up this bottom marker is. You can use your paintbrush. Oh, mine's almost exactly up to this metal part. You can use your paintbrush or a ruler or whatever you want. Come over to the other side, make yourself a mark at about the same height, and then come up about an inch and a half to two inches above that and make another marker. That's going to be the outside height and bottom of the pieces of land. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself some inside corners where um, the land will just stop. So I want the one on the left hand side to be a little bit smaller than the one on the right. So I'm going to be at about the same height and if this is about the center of my canvas, I'm to the left of that maybe about three inches. So somewhere in this vicinity, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then the one um, for this piece of land, if this is about center of my canvas, I'm about an inch and a half to two inches over to the right of that. Now I've just got to connect my dots. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this marker and connect it to here. These do not have to be perfectly straight lines. This is gonna be a nice carefree type of landscape. So you can certainly have some wiggle to it. We're gonna have reflections and all that good stuff. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just give myself a nice kind of organic type of shape for each of these um, formations. You can have yours exactly as mine or different than mine. I, I'm just using black at this point and I'm going to color it in with my black paint. I don't even have to color it a hundred percent. I'm just giving it a nice kind of thin coat just to give me a starting point for them. So just a little bit of black paint in through there. And then this one I want it to look a little bit bigger, um, but maybe where it meets in through here, I've got that a little bit shorter. So I'll go something like this and then I'm going to give it kind of a bigger type of a um, hill of sorts over in through here. Maybe I'll have this one kind of coming straight over like this. You can have yours, your um, rock formations, whatever way you want. It's going to be a visual preference on your part. If you want it to be really um, lumpy and bumpy or smooth, whatever works for you is totally fine. And then I'm just going to color it in with my black paint. Again, not much black paint at all. This is just 
um, really giving me a nice thin coat so I can add some highlights and stuff onto it in a minute. Even if you see some of your um, background color through there, that's okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add black and white to my brush at the same time. So I have a little bit of black and white on my brush. And now what I'm going to do is just give myself some little highlights to the rocks. I'm going to have um, my light source, I'm going to just assume is kind of up you know, higher in higher than my canvas. So I'm just going to have some light spots at the tops of these um, of these hill formations. So just a little bit of of white, and I'm just going to wiggle my brush a little bit. Give myself these light spots along the edges, maybe a little bit along the edge up here. If you um, want to have different shades of lightness. I just wiped my brush off on my paper towel and I'm just kind of giving myself these various shades of gray throughout the um, throughout the land mass itself. So it doesn't have to be anything perfect. Just let your brush kind of guide you through these organic type of um, marks. I'm going to do the same thing over on the other side. So I'm going to take, I've got some nice white paint on my brush right now with maybe a little bit of black on there too, white plus a little bit of black, giving myself some beautiful little highlights in through here. You can always bring the line or the top of a hill in front of another one just by kind of um, sketching in a little bit of a top side to um, a piece of the land. It's intended to just look nice and rocky with different peaks and valleys so just light spots and dark spots is going to help to sell that story as I come back in through here maybe just a little bit at the top and then maybe I've just got a couple of little layers of hills in through here or rocks whatever you want to assume that they are or give the interpretation that they are and then you can just fiddle with it if you want more black or you feel like you've gone too far you can bring black back whatever works for you once you've got that in place we're going to put its reflection down below so I want my reflection to just kind of be loose and maybe a little bit skewed and a little bit longer or like that it comes down farther down my canvas. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm actually just going to put a tiny bit of water on my brush right now to give me a little bit of a fluidity to um, my paint that's on my brush. If you, if you ran out of paint on your brush, you certainly could add a little bit more. Like I'm pretty much out of paint right now. So I'm going to add black plus water on my brush. And I'm just really going to kind of messy, messily go left to right, giving myself a pretty similar profile to what my, um, to what my landscape is. So if it's lower here and higher here, I'll do something similar in my, in my reflection, but I don't, I want to be able to see some of that water blue underneath. So I'm really not doing a whole heck of a lot, just pulling in some um, of the, the similar colors. It's light here, so I'm going to pick up a little bit of white on my dirty brush and give myself the insinuation that this is reflecting whatever is in that area as well. And I'm going to do the same thing over on the other side, I'm just making sure this kind of looks as well as I want it to look. Again, I've got some of my blue showing through. I've got some good black over here on the right side to show the darkness of this particular side in through here. And then maybe I think I need a little bit more lightness to resemble this in through here, just a little bit more in through there. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side. So I will um, put a little bit of water on my brush just to kind of get myself going and give myself a little bit of the footprint of this one. And this one wouldn't come down as far as that one because it is shorter, but I do want it to come down a little bit um, longer or of a bigger area than the actual hill itself. So that way it looks like that reflection is being skewed a bit in the water. And then I'm just going to kind of bring this down in a real carefree, loose fashion, giving myself a pretty similar pro profile to what's uh, to what the land is. Now I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of white paint in order to give myself a little bit of the reflection of the bright part of it. And again, it's a reflection, so in moving water. So you want to um, just kind of give it the essence of the, the shape, but it doesn't have to be the exact 
um, mirror image. If it's a mirror image, it'll look like it's really still water. So if you want it to look like the water's got a little bit of movement to it, you can have this kind of skewed type of reflection. And then we're gonna be utilizing our large brush for the next step. So once you've got your, your land and its reflection in place, make any little adjustments that you want, put your medium brush away, take out your large brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint some stars and some fog or mist, whatever you'd like to call it. So I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The color I'm gonna be using is white for the stars, and I'll be using white for my fog mist at the horizon line, but if I have to, I'll go into some of my blue as well. So really what I'm gonna do, I just have my bristle brush. I'm gonna tap it into my white paint a little bit in through here, and I'm going to be applying my stars with a flicking type of motion. You could use a, um, a toothbrush for this process. You could use your, your round brush, whatever kind of application process is easiest for you. There's 101 different ways that you can apply a thousand little stars to your canvas. So this way seems to work out pretty well for me. So this is what I'm going to go with. And if you get little streaky ones, like I tend to get every now and again, I just say that those are shooting stars. So you can, you can assume that they are whatever you want them to be. You could even put, you know, real big sparkly stars in here. You could use your other brush and just make dots if you wanted to. So whatever, actually, I think I'm gonna, I'm switching my brushes to my medium brush to give myself a couple of bigger little stars. So you could just kind of take your medium brush or your small brush and just do even like these bigger little twinkly stars if you want to. So that helps to just give a little bit more dimension, look like some of them are a bit closer to you if your um, splatter stars aren't as big as you want them to be. Then what I'm gonna do is put my medium brush away and keep my large brush. I'm, this is, I'm gonna do my foggy, misty stuff at my horizon line. So I'm just taking my brush and I'm wiping it off on my paper towel. I do not want a lot of paint on my brush to do this. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be doing kind of like a little scrubby type of technique right at that where the land meets the water. So I hardly have any paint on my brush right now. And my prior step, um, my paint is dry, so I'm not worried about um, intermingling that or getting that to, to mess up at all. So just a little tiny bit of paint on my brush right now. I'm gonna kind of bring it up in this area, give it a little bit more dimension. If you wanted to, you could certainly add a bit of your water blue into this if you felt that you wanted to elevate it a little bit more. I'm adding a tiny bit more white paint to my brush. I'm gonna put a little bit more controlled marks in through here, so a little bit more concentrated um, mist or fog right as it is touching the water line in through here. And you could, of course, make this more bold or more soft, whatever you want. You could have the mist really um, taking over a big area of the canvas. So whatever visually works for you, go for it. And then we're gonna be utilizing our chalk for the next step. So you can put your large brush away, do any little fiddles that you want, take out your piece of chalk and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be drawing an outline for the balloon. I'm gonna be using my chalk, and I do recommend that you have your canvas dry before you start this step. So we're just gonna do a nice, simple outline of the actual balloon part, and then a little um, square type of shape for the basket underneath. So I'm gonna have my balloon a little off to the right. You could certainly put yours wherever you'd like to, but I'm gonna have mine a little bit off to the right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the top of my canvas in through here. I'm gonna go to the right, maybe about an inch, inch and a half, and then down about, I would say like two inches or so. So somewhere in through there is gonna be my first, that's gonna be the top of my balloon. And then I'm gonna come down to just above my horizon line. So maybe about a quarter to a half of an inch above your horizon line. That'll give you the bottom part of it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it in a pretty circular shape, but it's going to get a little bit more narrow down at the bottom. So I'm going to find about the halfway point of my 
circle or of from here to here, somewhere in through here. I'm going to come to the left, maybe about two and a half, three inches, and then I'll do the same thing over on the right side, maybe about two and a half, three inches. And when I go to connect, I'm going to connect here to here to here and here to here to here. This is going to be nice and round, and then when I go to do it down here, I'll get it to narrow narrow a little bit. So I'm going to start up in through here, give myself a curve like that, mimic this on this side so it looks pretty circular, and then as I come down in through here, I'm going to just kind of bring it in just a little bit more, something like that, bring it across, and then do the same thing over on this side. So just bring it in just a little bit more narrow in through there and that's the beautiful part about chalk so you can make any little adjustments that you want and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to come below the my horizon line maybe about another half of an inch to an inch and i'm going to make my little basket so i'm going to have a little square to start like this just a little maybe half inch by half inch square then i'm going to take this top left hand corner make a little diagonal bottom left little diagonal connect these two like that i'm also going to make a little diagonal from the top uh, left corner and then connect those two like that and that's all i'm going to do for my outline we're going to use our medium brush for the next step so you can put your chalk away take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step all right so we're going to do for the next step is we're going to do the base coat for the balloon. I'm going to use my medium brush. I'm going to be using purple and white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself, which I've already done, I'm making myself like a little bit lighter version of the fluorescent purple. So all I did was I took my fluorescent purple and I added a touch of white to it. This is going to um, allow for it to be a little bit less see-through. It's going to provide us with a great base for the color of the um, of the balloon itself and then once you've got it in the color that you want really just going to paint in the entire area you're probably not going to get a perfect coverage on this first layer which is why we're just going to be doing this as a base coat we've got lots more stuff to to do on top of this balloon but this is just going to get us started with a really um, fun color to work with while we're building the other elements on the balloon later. And as you're painting this in, if you feel like you need to round out the edges on your shape of your balloon at all, like I feel like I'm doing, you can certainly go ahead and do that. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect at this point. I am trying to cover up all of my chalk marks. So if you find that some of um, the chalk is still evident after this step, it's okay. Um, you could certainly erase it with a little bit of water if, if you still have some of those marks along the side. And then once we've got this done, we're gonna be switching to our small brush for the next step. So I'm just getting the rest of this area colored in with my base uh, color for purple, my like lavenderish type of color, and then I will put this medium brush away. I'm going to take out my small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint our basket and all the little details around it. I'm going to be using my small brush. The colors that I'm going to use are yellow, black, and white. I might use a little bit of brown too, but in my head right now I'm thinking I'm going to be able to use just yellow, black, and white. So what I'm going to do is I am going to utilize yellow and white. I'm pre-mixing myself a little bit of a light yellow color. I'm going to start the process with this color. This is going to be my um, highlight kind of color on this left little section of my of my basket. So just a little bit of light yellow is going to be in this section in through here. And I'm using a small brush so I can kind of get these little tiny details in here. I'm going to use this color as a bit of a highlight on the on this edge up in through here. 
and if you go outside the lines like I just did, no worries. <laughs> we'll, we'll be able to make all, all kinds of corrections. We're going to be doing a, a little bit more of a highlight in a second on there as well. So now what I'm going to do on this back side, I want this to look a little bit darker than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of this light yellow in through here. Now I'm picking up black paint on my dirty brush and I'm going to make this back right hand side of this um, basket look darker. So I just wipe my brush off on my paper towel because I and I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of that little that light yellow so I can get these two to blend in a little bit. You don't need it to be perfect, just something that will indicate that this back side is darker than um, that left side. It can be pretty dramatic because it is definitely um, in a silhouetted type of way but you don't have to go too you don't have to bring it all the way black unless you want to. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm wiping my brush off on my paper towel. I'm picking up some black paint. I'm gonna color the inside of the basket with black paint. Just getting that all nice and um, like it's the inside of the basket. So there's not much light in there at all. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm washing and drying my brush. I'm gonna put a little bit of white paint on my brush so I can have a nice highlight um, on this top left hand side, down this be this bottom left hand side. So this is just white paint. I'm just enhancing the little edges of my basket like this. So a little bit more white paint just on that edge. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm washing and drying my brush. I'm gonna put some little people inside of my basket. So I'm gonna pick up just a tiny bit of black paint. I'm really not gonna do anything fancy here other than to have one person a little bit taller than the other. So I'm just gonna put kind of a little bit of a um, circular type of shape for the head. Then I'm gonna bring it down into um, maybe some shoulders, which are a little bit wider, and then just get this to disappear in the basket. Then I'm gonna have the next person to the left just a little bit smaller. So a little bit smaller of a circle, a little bit shorter, and then just bring it down into the basket. If you wanted there to look like there is an arm of sorts, you could certainly just pull out like a little diagonal line if, if you can even detect something like that. Then I'm gonna put a tiny bit of white paint on my brush and just give a little bit of a highlight on the left-hand side of these people. So it looks like we've got, um, you know, that they're being illuminated by something too. Again, you don't need to do much. We're just giving a real tiny impression. You could even put a little bit of a hat or something on one of them if you wanted to. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just wiping my brush off. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of black paint to give myself some strings that are gonna connect the, the balloon to the basket. So I really just kind of want some natural, um, um, skinny lines that are gonna curve from the basket to the, or from the balloon to the basket. So I'm gonna start maybe somewhere in through here and maybe just bring it down to the corners of the basket. And you can have a lot of um, strings. I was, when I was looking at these, there was just a, an assortment of different numbers of strings. So you could um, really have fun with doing a ton of them. I'm just kind of bringing um, a few down in like a nice sketchily way so it looks like it's you know attached <laughs> to, to the top and I have a little bit of water on my brush so that's allowing me to get more of these little sketchily type of lines with clean edges and if you need to clean up anything like I feel like I went over this line a little bit more so I picked up a little bit of white. Now I'm just going to do a quick reflection of it down below so I don't need any fine-tuned detail. I'm going to start with a little bit of black because we'd be seeing the underside of it. So I'm just going to go directly below it and I'm just going to give myself a little tiny sketchily uh, mark for the underside of it. Now I wipe my brush off on my paper towel. I'm picking up my light yellow because this is going to be the left hand side of it. So a little bit of that light yellow over there, maybe a touch of the, this top part of the basket in through here. And this again could be skewed because it's um, in the reflection. I don't really need to do a whole heck of a lot, just giving it a little bit of authenticity. Just picked up a little bit of white. So we could have that little bit of a white reflection over on this um, the left-hand side showing the tippy top of it. Maybe if you felt that you could see a little reflection of the heads, just pop out a little 
couple of little marks in through there, and then a couple of strings coming down from those corners. So a little bit of black paint on my brush with a touch of water, just giving myself the, um, the essence of the strings. I think I need to darken this up a little bit over here too, something like that. And again, just a tiny bit of black paint on my brush, giving myself these um, the illusion of the strings. And then make any little tiny adjustments that you want. We're gonna be utilizing that medium brush for the next step. So you can just put the small brush away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what I'm gonna do for the next step is I'm gonna be doing the highlights and shadows on the main color for the balloon. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are purple, brown, and white. And what I'm in essence gonna do is I'm gonna make this bottom side and towards the right hand side a little bit darker. I'm gonna give myself a second coat of that light purple that we did, and then I'm gonna make it a little bit lighter in this area over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of my purple, my fluorescent purple, and add a little bit of brown to it. So this is gonna give me this nice, deep, rich, um, darker version of the fluorescent purple, which is gonna act as a great uh, shadow type of color on this right-hand side. And then I'm just gonna paint it in. So I'm going all the way to the edge. I can even bring it down towards this bottom area a little bit. Once I've got it started, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blend it in with this main color that we did. So I'm bringing it down just a little bit down in through here. Now what I'm gonna do, if I have too much paint on my brush, I just wipe it off on my paper towel and I'm gonna pick up some of that mid-tone that we created and I'll get these two sections to blend in with one another. So this is gonna provide me with some good dimension on the balloon to tell the story of it having form and also perhaps where at where the light source might be. This base coat that we're doing is also going to help us when we go to do the colored um, sections of the balloon because the colored sections are gonna see what's underneath it. So when we go to do the colored sections, it will translate, the, they'll be darker on the right side and lighter on the left side based on this under coat that we're doing. So it all kind of is a building process, especially when using acrylic paint that tends to have a little bit of translucency to it. I just keep picking up that mid-tone that we had created previously. And in a second, I'm gonna start adding white paint to it uh, as I'm up in this top left-hand corner. So just making sure that I've got a good blend going on before I start adding that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up my light purple plus a little bit of white paint on my brush at the same time and I'm going to give myself this lighter area up at the top. So again, this is going to help when we go to put the, the patterns on the balloon in order for those to show, um, to, to show the, that there is form to the entire um, balloon. And then I just get these to blend in a little bit. If you um, need to add a little bit of moisture to your brush just to get some nice clean edges. I just added a tiny bit of water to my brush in order to um, get that clean edge going. And then I just lightly, with a real light touch as my paint is drying, just get these to blend in. And then once you've got this done, we are going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step. So fiddle with this all you want. If you need to do another layer, do another layer, and then you can wash and dry the medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting the pattern on the balloon. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are orange, yellow, white, and brown. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself kind of a plaid type pattern. You could certainly make whatever kind of pattern that you'd like. You can have checkers and polka dots or stripes, whatever you'd like, but this is the pattern I'm going to do. So I'm going to start with some yellow paint on my brush. My paint is translucent, which means you can see through it because it's a student grade that has um, translucency to it. So if your paint as you're working is a solid color, you may want to add a little bit of water or a little bit of liquid medium if you want to have this same type of effect that I'm going for. So I'm going to do two horizontal stripes for um, this yellow color. I'm going to have 
one starting in through here. They're going to be maybe about a half of an inch to an inch wide. And then I'm going to just have it curve just a little bit in order to get over to the other side. I don't need it to curve very much, just a little bit, something like that, which will give the viewer the information that it is in fact a round object and not a flat object. And then I'm just coloring it in with my yellow paint. So because we had that, um, transition from light to dark underneath it, it's going to show the transition from light to dark in this yellow color as well. I'm going to have another one right in through here, so just riding along the edge in through there and then giving it a similar curve to that one. Maybe not as dramatic because as we're seeing it on the side of the, um, you know, at the angle, maybe it's not quite as curved, but you can use your best judgment when it comes to, to that. And then I'll just do the same thing over on this right hand side, just giving myself that little bit of a curve to um, again tell the story of the shape or the form of this particular object. I'm just painting it in. And your stripes can be, one can be thicker or wider than the other one, one can be thinner, one can be more vibrant, one can be more dull. It's going to be totally up to you how you want to um, convey the 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 colored pattern maybe you just liked your your balloon purple so that's going to be you know again up to you so now that i've got that on there i'm going to do some some vertical stripes as well but i'm going to be using my orange color and i'm going to be painting them right on top of here so i'm going to wash and dry my um medium brush i'm picking up orange paint and for me i think of like a basketball so i'm going to go almost straight down the middle and then each line that i do is going to be curved a little bit more towards the edges so i'm going to um, come down this center in through here so just from the top of my balloon just kind of coming down the center it might have a little bit of a curve to it it might not depending on what you what you want for yours to be you could also pencil this in or chalk this in. Um, I'm gonna have maybe two more over here on this right hand side. So I'm gonna start up at the top and then just bring it down in through here. And I know that I'm gonna be crossing over potentially wet yellow paint, which I'm totally okay with that. I think it adds to this fun kind of plaid pattern that I am going for. And then maybe we'll have another one kind of in between, in through here. And for me, all of my stripes kind of start at the center of the top and have a um, motion of meeting the center or down towards the, the center part of the bottom. So that's just kind of where I feel that they would be that they would be placed in this type of pattern. So if you want yours to be placed differently, you can place yours differently. And then on this one side, I think I'm a little bit to the right of the center. So I think I'm going to have three stripes on this side. So again, just starting at the top and giving myself a slightly curved line for this first one in through here. Then I'm going to go ahead and do a second one. So maybe somewhere in through here. I'll thicken them up in a minute, just kind of getting them placed in a, in a nice fluid fashion. So I, I kind of, I, sometimes the faster I go with my brush, the more of a um, continual line that I can get that makes my painterly eye happy. And then this one will go just right over here on this left hand side. So this left one, if you have one going on the left like I do, you can really utilize um, this color to just clean up the clean up the edge of your balloon too if you had any um, little imperfections that you felt needed a little bit of work on them. And then you could just fiddle with these to um, if you needed them to be the same exact width or anything like that, you could certainly fiddle with it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of a shadow and a highlight in between these, which is in essence going to kind of give the balloon the look that it like each row is kind of bumped out um which is what i was kind of seeing when i was looking at um when i was looking at hot air balloons that because of the the material that they've made they're made of they have these little um like the fabric looks like it's being blown out kind of with the seams and stuff so i'm washing and drying my brush 
I'm gonna put a little bit of my brown paint on my brush and I'm gonna put a stripe on the right hand side of each one of my orange stripes. So I'm just getting a little bit of brown paint on my brush and I'm gonna give a little bit of a um, shadowy type of stripe on the right hand side of my orange stripe. And again, this is just a pattern that was um, interesting to me. So you can certainly come up with your own type of pattern if you want. Um, that's gonna be, again, a personal preference. You can imagine yourself taking this beautiful midnight balloon ride and you know maybe you utilize your favorite colors or your partner's favorite colors or whatever you like. Or maybe you've even taken a balloon ride at some point in your life and you remember what that balloon look like. Oops, this line's getting a little away from me. My hand is in a little awkward position. So I'm just gonna kind of figure out a way. I'm bracing myself with my um, with my hand on my canvas so I can get that the way that I want. There we go. And then I'll do this other one over here trying to keep my hand out of the way for you guys to see this here. And then, and of course, if I do something that I'm like, oh, that wasn't exactly as I had anticipated, you can always correct it. Just let it dry for a minute and then come back with any little bits of correction. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush now. Maybe just pull this in just a little bit so it's not so thick. I just put a little bit of water on my brush. Same thing with this little line in through here. So I'm just put, I just put a little bit of water on my brush. That will help me to kind of push it back into the area that I wanted. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of highlight on this left hand side. So washing and drying my brush, my high, my brightest areas over here. So I'm going to put a tiny bit of white paint on my brush and really I'm just concentrating kind of up in this top left hand area. And again, even if I run into some wet paint, I'm okay with that because I want it to kind of blend in with one another and really just look like this whole top left area is being highlighted. So I've got a little bit of white paint on my brush and just kind of intermingling it with this top left hand area. I'm um, just wiping my brush off, picking up a tiny bit more white and I, I think I want this area to be a little bit lighter in through here. So just a little bit of white paint on my brush is gonna illuminate this side of the, of the balloon. And if your paint underneath is too wet and this isn't working for you, just give it a minute. Let it dry for a minute, then you can come back in on top of this and put these little bright highlights on here. And then, um, so fiddle with it all you want. And then when you've got this done, we are going to be utilizing the same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it, just getting this nice bright highlight over here on this left hand side. So you can wash it and dry it and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the reflection of the balloon in the water. I'm gonna use my medium brush. I'm gonna be using all of my colors because whatever I used in the balloon, I'm gonna have in the reflection plus I'll probably use some of my watercolor and uh, black as well in order to make sure that everything looks like it's nice and moving and looks good to my painterly eye. So I'm gonna build my reflection like I built my balloon. I'm gonna start with that base colors of purple, then I'm going to go into my stripey kind of colors, and then I will be adding any kind of more movement in the water that I want. I want it to look pretty skewed, in the water so it's gonna be start as narrow as the balloon is and it's gonna end up getting wider than the actual balloon itself so that way it'll look like it's kind of getting closer to us so I'm gonna start with my base coat of my purple which was that medium tone that we had created so that light purple that we had created and I'm gonna just kind of start to wiggle my brush left to right in order to give myself the illusion of ripples in the water and again I wanted to go pretty darn far out and I know that I've used this purple in the entire balloon so I'm safe to use this as in essence kind of my base coat for my reflection I'm just seeing how far out I had this so I want to get it a little bit further in through there so I'm, I'm safe to use this as my base coat for the reflection I'm just going left to right allowing for some of that watercolor to show in between and again I'm going to just kind of come down here and to the left a little bit that's going to give me um, a nice far um, footprint for the reflection itself 
So now that I have that on there, I'm going to pick up some of that dark purple that we created for the shadowy side, and I'm gonna put that over on this right side. So whatever I did up top, I'm going to be giving a little bit of a reflection of it down below. So I've got that dark purple, and on my brush, maybe a little bit, I think I, that was a little bit of extra brown on there. So dark purple over here on the right hand side, maybe in through here as well. And then I'm gonna go in for light purple, the, um, my light purple plus a little bit of white on this left hand side for what we had done for the highlighted area um, of the, the main area of the balloon. So something like this is going on this left hand side to give the illusion of that lightness in through there. Now I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna put my horizontal stripes on first because that's how I built the, um, the balloon. And so of course we're not gonna see the whole balloon. So I'm gonna just kind of go maybe midway up this reflection and put some of um, this yellow in through here. And then maybe just a little bit at the bottom of my canvas. So it'll imply the, um, the other stripe that we had in through there. And I'm just kind of going left to right, making sure that the, that color is, um, is reflecting in, in the water. Now I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna put my orange stripes on. So again, washing, drying, brown brush. My orange stripes are going vertically, so I want to kind of emulate that in the reflection as well. So I'm going to put a little bit down in through here. I have one down the center, so I'm really just going to kind of wiggle a horse or a vertical line to imply um, the stripes. And I know I have my center one. I have three on the left, and then two more on the right. So I've got one, and then I just kind of make sure that I, I've emulated the, the correct number so it gives authenticity to this being a pretty um, real reflection. And then I have two more on this side. And again, just kind of splaying them out the farther away that they, they go from the, um, from the actual base of the balloon. So something like that. And then I have um, my highlights and my shadows. So I wash and dry my brush and put in a tiny bit of brown on my brush. The shadows aren't going to really show much because the water is pretty dark down here. So those probably won't translate as much different. Um, but the highlight certainly will. So I just washed and dried my brush. I'm putting a little bit of more white paint on my brush to put a little bit more highlight over in through here, maybe a little bit on these orange stripes, maybe a little bit in that yellow. So again, just making this left-hand side look a little bit brighter than that right-hand side is going to make it look that much more um, believable and realistic. So now that I've got this on here, making sure that this kind of connects in through here, uh, I'm going to put some more movement in the water. So I'm going to, uh, I just washed and dried my brush. I'm putting some of my watercolor that um, dark blue and just a teeny tiny bit of white paint itty bitty bit of white paint on my brush just to give myself a little bit of movement in the um, water next to or intermingled with my um, my balloon itself so nothing really fancy just kind of giving myself a, a hint of additional movement so it um, makes sense for the ripply type of um, reflection that we did. Now I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of black because I like the, the deep um, darkness at the bottom of the canvas. So I just picked up a little bit of black which is gonna enhance my ripples in my waves. And again, just kind of wiggling it in a little bit, nothing major, just something to again, give me a little bit of that motion in the water. I'm not overdoing it, just translating the color from up above down into here and then making any movement that I want in the water itself. And then once you've got this done, we are gonna be utilizing our small brush for the next step. So you can put this medium brush away, do any little modifi modifications that you feel are necessary and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm going to be using my small brush. I'm going to be using black paint. I think I'm going to sign this one in the bottom left hand corner. I sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol 
or whatever you'd like for your identifying mark. Oops, there's a little bit of extra color on that one. Whatever you want for your identifying mark to be is totally fine. It's your painting. You get to sign it however you'd like. And that is going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a fun balloon ride. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.